Hi, this is Kathy Quinn with Floriani. Floriani is a division of R&K Distributing, and I want to welcome you to this week's Project of the Week. Well, we are continuing on with all the new updates that we released in February. So the next update I want to talk to you about is really, really awesome. I'm going to come over into my designs, and I'm going to pull in one of our cute tattoo designs. These are our from our Card Forever Tattoo, and I'm going to pull in this little owl. Now, of course, 3D, there's my owl. But I, what I want to talk to you about is DJ added some really cool features into Select. Now, number one, these features can be turned on and off. So I'm going to go ahead and select this, come in, and I'm going to select my owl. And I want you to notice... I'm going to back up just a hair here, zoom out just a bit, because I want you to be able to see all the icons I have. Now, getting used to these icons is just like anything. It takes a little bit of getting used to before you're comfortable with them. But I'm going to tell you, once you get comfortable with these icons, you're going to absolutely love them to death. Now, the first icon I'm going to point out to you is the X. Now what we've done is I have selected this and you'll notice that I've got some functions that I can do. Well the X is I can delete. So that's number one. So let's come back over here and let's get, um, I'm going to bring in the pin cushion. This is also from our Forever Tattoo card. I'm going to select it. Now once it's selected, we're going to back out just a hair so you can see. And notice down here, anytime I select this, I'm, it's going to select all of it. Why? It's grouped. So notice here at the bottom right hand corner, you've got your group and ungroup icon. Now we've always used them from right up here on the top. You'll notice ungroup is available. Group is not available because it is already grouped. Well normally we would have to come up here and select ungroup. Well, now I can simply click on the ungroup, and right there it is ungrouped it. So now if I want to select a piece of this, all I have to do is touch a piece, and now that piece has everything available to it. So let's go ahead, and I'm going to select the whole pincushion again, just by selecting it all. Now it is ungrouped. Now let's go on and look, keep looking. Now over here this is a zoom icon so it's a fit to screen so notice as soon as I touch that it fit this design to screen as closely as possible now I'm gonna zoom back out now how would I do that normally well here I could double left mouse click on my magnifying glass on the toolbar to fit to screen okay let's go ahead and zoom out again or I could come up here and I could tell it, let's fit to screen. Well, let's see if I can tell it. Let's fit to screen to fit. So again, I have fit it to the screen. But it's much quicker and simpler to grab right here. So, so far we've deleted, we've grouped and ungroup, and we can fit to screen. So let's go ahead and Zoom out again because I want you to be able to see the icons well. Now down here in the bottom left hand corner, you're going to notice I've got copy and paste. Now before we would select what we wanted, we would come to tool, we would come, I'm sorry, to edit, copy, edit, paste, or we would select it, we would right mouse click, copy, right mouse click paste that's so it took us a couple of functions well now all we have to do is click on copy paste and notice it offset it so I can tell I have copied and pasted now that is a wonderful wonderful thing to have because a lot of times well let me undo as art there we go why that is nice that it offsets is a lot of times we copy and paste when you hit 
right mouse click copy, right mouse click paste, it's going to paste exactly on top of itself. And sometimes we lose that and we eventually decide we've got some bulletproof design because we're not sure if we really pasted it or not. Now I'm going to, on my copy, I'm going to group that. So now if I click on this, notice I can get pieces because this one's ungrouped. Well over here, this one's grouped. I copied, pasted, and grouped it. Now let's say I just want on this little curly cue in the needle. That's only going to get the outline. But see, I can copy and paste from that outline. So now let's pull that off. And I've copied and pasted that outline. Now notice right here, here's an icon. Now if an icon is not there, it means that function's not available. Notice we just lost group and ungroup because this is one solid piece of thread. There aren't two objects here. This is only one object. So there's nothing to group or ungroup it to. But let's look at this icon right here. Oh, that is my shape edit outline. So I can edit that without. Now before, I would have had to come up here and come over here to select my shape to edit outlines, inclinations, entry and exit. Well here, because I have just one object selected, I can grab my shape outline tool there. There's my start, there's my stop, my inclination line, there isn't one because this is a single run stitch, so you don't have an angle to a run stitch. So we've got the edit outline. Now let's come back over here. Whoops, that's the one that I'm still got edit my edit outline there. So let me select this. Now let's look at some more on here. Let's come on down, move this guy out of the way. So now we've looked at copy and paste. <clears throat> we've looked at group and ungroup. We've looked at fit to screen. And we have looked at delete. Now let's go ahead and grab this guy again and let's delete him off the screen. Now the other thing we've got is lock. Now let's say I can lock and unlock a segment. So this is locked. I just locked it, which means I can't select it anymore. I'm left mouse clicking on it. I can go ahead and draw a box around it like I was doing before. It will not select because I have now locked this to protect it from me doing something. And you know sometimes you'll get something just right and with it unlocked, you'll move your mouse and, oh, rats, it happened. Something went awry. Well, by having your lock, and see it locked all these segments. So I would come in and I would start unlocking them. Because since I hit the lock over there, it locked everything up. So now we look at anything that's locked. And by left mouse clicking on my lock, I can unlock all those little pieces. So I have my lock over here. Now notice, we're going to do this again. I'm going to show you why. Notice the minute I tell it to lock, that disappears. I don't have the option to unlock it anymore. Why? Because I can't select it. So if it can't be selected, I can't use the new selection tools. I would have to then come over here just like we did before, and I would have to unlock things. Whoops, not tell it to close off. I would have to unlock it over here in the toolbar. So you understand the lock and unlock and let me just right mouse click here and I'm going to collapse all and I'm going to make sure on the second one everything is unlocked. So now I have this all unlocked again but now I'm going to click on it. Well I'm missing something's not unlocked because you can see that one piece would not select. So let's go up and see what lock we are missing. We're missing a lock. Well, it looks to me like they're unlocked. Let's keep looking. Let's select you again. I've got unlock on all of these guys. It looks to me like everything is unlocked. Okay, let's try to see again. Let's click on you. Well, it is telling me that this middle can't be selected so that it is locked. So somewhere I've missed it here. Let's see if this is just acting crazy. 
because that is the no that's the top one so we're going to come down I think I see where my problem might be let's see nope okay somehow I deleted it is what happened or here we are here's our problem right here it is because this is sandstone let's see we've got that nope we are missing somehow I managed to oh here it is it's locked there it is I'm looking all over for the lock and there it is so now I've unlocked it now I can come in here nope well we're going to figure this out figure out what I have done and why that's from that side we are missing that one is what it is somehow I deleted it out of here when I was moving stuff around because it is not there this piece that I can't select from somehow it's there I can see it let me yeah it won't let me let's go right here hmm this is really strange so let me see I am stymied on this one. I'm going to lock you and unlock you. There it is. What's happened is it's picked up the last color here and the first color here. So I needed to unlock that second color. But since they're both under one, as you can see, if I came down, I would have found down at the bottom this part was locked. So I had to lock and unlock that to get it. And it's nice when these things happen on our video because then that tells you what's happened to you when it comes your turn to be frustrated. So you can see what happened is I had it <clears throat> combining the last color of this one, the first color of this one. So even though that looked unlocked, it, it had locked the second color when I did this. So again, with this locked, let's go ahead and see here. It selected everything but this okay but notice the same thing over here it's going to leave actually this little border that we can't see is not selected because the blue behind it selected but this little white here would not have selected so I would have to come back here and I would have to unlock twice to get it all unlocked so here we go now we're completely unlocked so I'm glad that happened there so that we could figure it out together we figure a lot out together on my videos let's collapse all let me finish what's what we've got on these let's fit this to screen now I've lost it I've zoomed it out so bad well now what have I done to it to fit come here baby I have zoomed this thing crazy let me see if I can get it back into the center of the screen here nope I've done it in I don't know where it went it's gone crazy so we're just gonna close it and we're not gonna save to save the changes to it let's get us in those are two other of our forever tattoo designs something I'm working on okay so let's look at the other function on here now I am going to create a shape I'm going to come in here and I'm going to create a shape let me see how I can do this best to explain it now I'm creating a shape so I used my create shape tool I'm going to pick my angle then it's going to ask me where do you want it to start where do you want it to stop and then it will fill in now we have a close shape tool on this and I'm just gonna try and figure out the best way to show you this let's delete this and let's get a run let's go ahead and get a run stitch okay and we'll talk about presets next week next week we're gonna talk a lot about our presets so I'm going to go ahead and create this. Okay, now this is a run stitch. I'm going to select it. Now if I want to close this and I want it to close real nice, normally I would come over here and grab this. Let's say I want to close this shape. 
because maybe I want to turn it into a fill or something. I could come over here and grab it down here, but I can click right here and it's going to close that shape. The th reason you like the close shape tool when you're creating something that you want to close, let's say I was going to turn this into an applique. If I click myself and I try to end, and I'll show you what I'm talking about, if I'm clicking this and I try to end exactly here, I may bingo. It may I may have closed it perfect. Or I may have overshot it a little bit that I can't tell because it's so tiny. So see here, see how this kind of stuck out? Because when I tried to close it myself with my eyes, I didn't hit perfect. But if I use that close shape tool, Notice it's going to close it absolutely perfect. There is no room for error that way. So whenever you're creating shapes and stuff, never try to click the edge of the shape yourself. Always tell it to close the shape for you. So I could have turned that into an applique. I could have turned it into a fill, everything. And it would be perfect because I let it close the shape. So now we have addressed all the tools that have been added to your select tool. Now, of course, everything works just like it always did. I can, by using the corner handles, I can make it smaller or larger. I can rotate. That None of that has changed. I still have all of that. Um, so you can rotate, make it, you can skew it. We haven't changed what your boxes are or your rotation tools, but we have added a lot of quick tools right to you. Now at first, this is a little daunting. And if you've got a real small shape, let's say I'm picking, selecting something like an eyeball, this can get really messy. Well, we do have the option, if this makes you a little crazy, you can come into View. I'm sorry, we're going to go to Tools, Preferences, and View. Excuse me. I'm going to go to Preferences, and I'm going to go to View. Now, I can tell it to turn off the selection controls. So when I say OK, notice they're all gone. But I highly recommend you start playing with these a little bit. You're going to get so dependent on them because they are so nice to use. Preferences, View. So selection controls. So when I, the only time I turn these off is when I'm working like with a little bitty tiny, uh, I'm changing the color of an eyeball or a polka dot on a, the back of a ladybug or something. If it gets a little cluttered, I'll come in here and turn this off, but I'll turn it back on. And as long as we're here, highlight selection. Remember, you can pick the color you want your highlight selection to be. I pick hideous pink because I don't like pink. So I always know it's selected when I pick that. Show crosshairs in input mode. I'll show you this. It doesn't look good on my computer when I'm recording. So since I'm recording this, you'll see what I'm talking about. Let me go ahead here and close that down for a second. Let me get, um, I'm just going to get this run stitch. See how I have crosshairs and see how they look like there's 16 of them on, on the screen? It gets real messy because I'm recording it. If I'm not recording, I don't have all this extra noise. But a lot of people like having that crosshair because if I want to hit perfect on the corner, I've got the X and Y axis before I do that. So as you can see before I click how clean it looks. Once I start clicking with the recording, it gets a little crazy. But if I wanted to get this really close in here, you've got your X and Y lines. So that's what it means on the crosshair. So let's go back to this view. So that is the show crosshair in input mode. The other one, of course, is show backdrop below grid. We've talked about that a little bit uh, three or four weeks ago. Show selection controls, that's what we talked about today. And then of course, if we want to lock our properties in sequence view and library windows, why? So you can't close them accidentally. Um, we don't want to close them accidentally, so we can lock them, them away from us. 
Let me go back to preferences. Something's crazed here. Let's go to view. Okay, let me get that crosshair rid of the crosshair. There we go. And I could lock my properties in sequence view and library windows. So if I do that, notice there's no more closing them. I can change the windows, the size of the windows within the pane, but I no longer have the ability to close them accidentally. This is great for when you're working in class. Classroom, this is the best thing to have because you don't ever accidentally close it. At home, I much prefer, for me, I like having that turned where I can close it. And the reason I like to close it is if I want to, like when we were looking at our sequence view, I want to see it big. I'm going to close my properties so I can look at everything on this on the sequence view much easier. So I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. I hope you enjoy our selection control tools that we have added for you. If you'll use them, you'll get used to them and you will love them. So I thank you for coming this week and I look forward to talking with you again next week. We'll talk about some presets. Um, we're going to talk about our satin stitch. So we've got lots more goodies to talk about over the next three or four weeks. See you then. Have a great week.